Previously, we discussed an optical instrument known as a telescope, and we said a telescope is able to magnify objects that are found very far away from the telescope. Now we're going to discuss a second type of optical device that is capable of magnifying objects, but those objects are found very close to the microscope rather than very far. So a microscope is able to magnify a very small object. So a microscope is an optical device capable of enlarging or magnifying objects that are found very close. Now we're going to discuss a special type of a microscope known as a compound microscope. And a compound microscope is a microscope that consists of a system of two convex or converging lenses. One of those lenses is known as the objective lens and the second lens is known as the eyepiece or the eyepiece lens. So let's begin by looking at the following description of our compound microscope. So we have lens one, our objective, and lens two, our eyepiece. So the objective lens is essentially the lens that inputs all those rays of light that bounce off our object. So let's suppose we take a small object as shown by the small purple arrow labeled O and we place it just beyond very close to the focal point of the objective lens. So this is the focal length, this is the focal point of the objective, and this is where our object is placed. So for all approximation purposes, we can assume that the object distance is approximately equal to the focal length of the objective. This will become important in step three when we discuss the total magnification. So the object is placed just beyond the focal point of the objective. Next, all the rays of light essentially bounce off our object, uh, move through and refract inside our objective lens and then they converge at a single point and that's where our image is formed. Let's call that image image 1 or I1. So notice that this image is a real image because it's found on the opposite side of where light is coming from. The image is inverted because it points in the opposite direction and notice that the image is slightly enlarged compared to our object. And also, this image is found relatively far away from the objective lens. So, the object is placed just beyond the focal point of the objective. The objective lens forms an inverted magnified real image far away from that objective lens. Next, we essentially take our uh, knob next to our eyepiece and we turn that knob and we move that eyepiece so that the focal point of our eyepiece is almost exactly at the point where the image is formed. This will become important in step one and step two when we discuss the total magnification. So, the eyepiece is then adjusted so that the focal length of the eyepiece is close to the image formed by the objective lens. Next, the eyepiece lens then uses image one formed by the objective lens to create a second image that is virtual, magnified, and enlarged so it's found all the way to the left side of the objective lens. So it's virtual because it's found on the same side as where light is coming from. It's inverted because it points down compared to the upward direction of the object and it's much enlarged as seen in the following diagram. So if we want to, we can use the ray diagram as shown by these orange arrows to find the position of image 1 and image 2 as shown in the following diagram. And finally, the eye essentially uses this second image. It treats the image as if it was the actual object and it creates the final image of that object 
object and puts it exactly on the retina of that eye. And so what the microscope does is it essentially magnifies in two stages this object so the person can observe all the detail found on that particular object. And that's exactly what a compound microscope does. So, now let's discuss the total magnification of this particular compound microscope. So, to find our final or total magnification of a system of two convex lenses, as in this case, we find the individual magnifications of each one of these lenses, and then we multiply them out, and that gives us the final total magnification. So, Let's begin with step one. In step one, we want to find the individual magnification of the objective lens. So the objective lens essentially acts as a converging lens, so that basically means the magnification of the objective lens given by lowercase mo is equal to the image distance, this image distance, divided by the object distance, which is given by this quantity. Now, remember, when we were adjusting our eyepiece, we said that we're essentially moving the eyepiece so that the focal point of our eyepiece is on the same plane as our image. So we're basically assuming that the eye is relaxed so that image 1 is exactly on the focal point of the eyepiece. So that basically means that if we want to find the image distance, to find this image distance, we essentially take L, which is the distance from the objective to the eyepiece lens, and we subtract this, and that will give us the image distance of image 1. So we replace DI with L minus Fe, where Fe is the focal length of the eyepiece, and L is the distance between the two lenses, and DO is the object distance. So this is the equation for the magnification of the objective lens. Let's move on to step two. In step two, we essentially want to calculate the magnification for the eyepiece lens. The eyepiece lens essentially acts as a magnifying glass. It acts as a simple magnifier. And so the magnification given by uppercase E of the eyepiece is equal to, well, we're making the assumption that the image caused by objective lens is formed exactly on the focal point of the eyepiece. And so that means this virtual image will be found infinitely far away and the equation becomes n divided by the focal length of the eyepiece. So we obtain this equation in our lecture on magnifying glasses and simple magnifiers. So n is the near point of this particular eye and f e is the focal focal length of our eyepiece. So, we're assuming that image 2 is formed at infinity and the n is equal to 25 centimeters for the normal eye. So finally, we move on to step 3. In step 3, we essentially calculate the total magnification by multiplying the magnification of the objective lens by the magnification of the eyepiece. So this or this multiplied by this. And that's exactly what we get in this equation. So L minus Fe divided by DO multiplied by N divided by Fe. Now let's make some further approximations. So remember, we're assuming that this distance L is much larger than the distance uh, Fe or the distance Fo. So we're assuming that the distance between our two lenses is much greater than the focal length of either one of our two lenses. So that basically means L minus some very small number is approximately equal to L. So that basically means we can replace this 
um, L minus Fe with simply L. Now, in this step, when we said we're taking our object and placing the object very close to our focal point of the objective, we're placing it very close. In fact, for all approximation purposes, the focal length of the objective is approximately equal to the object distance. So that means DO is approximately equal to FO. So we can replace DO with FO and the magnification of our compound microscope when we make these assumptions is approximately equal to L, the distance between our two lenses multiplied by N, the near point of our eye, which is assumed to be 25 centimeters, divided by the product of the focal length of each one of our two lenses.